What's up guys, this is Val and another video in the Cinema 4D modeling series which I'm doing for you guys. Um, today we're going to cover the cloner object. You know, just go over a quick, you know, few tips and explain what the actual object does. So yeah, let's just insert a cube. Um, let's go into your MoGraph cloner. Mm -hmm. Put the make the cube a child of the cloner. By now, the amount of times we've done this, you probably know what that means. Um, so the mode is set automatically as linear. I'm sure what you, you know what that word means. It means that the, the objects will be cloned in a linear um, direction. So it's, this time is going to be facing in the x uh, the y direction. So let's increase the count to about five. And as you can see, they've um, five have been cloned. Pretty, you know, self-explanatory. By controlling the Y, you can choose the the space between the different clones um, and the offset from the actual original area where the cube was placed. Um, and if you want, you can also kind of do it in the X direction so if you make that zero then obviously we'll go in the, only in the X so yeah let's just push this up about there now you can also do change kind of the scalage of the the, the clones objects it kind of it's a weird kind of tool with this well not tool attribute which changes um, and you can also kind of you can also change the rotation of the cubes. Kind of does it randomly, sort of. Um, and it kind of it gives you some pretty cool f effects when you're for animations and stuff like that. So let's move into the radial clone. So this is this is a the area of the tool that's really commonly used in modeling for Cinema 4D. Uh, a lot of people use it. Um, so as in, as in the radius here is the actual radius between the center point here and the actual object. Um, so it kind of creates a circle uh, in between the squares. So yeah, that, and then that's pretty you know self-explanatory as well. And the end angle you can choose to which how far you want it to go, basically. Um, I'm actually quite tired. <laughs> I'm recording this 1.30 in the morning before I go on a holiday after tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, now the final um, mode is the grid array. This you see so many people use it in speed arts when they're trying to create something abstract or for whatever reason. I don't know why, but just people seem to use it, I guess, because it's pretty simple. Uh, so yeah, so if you increase the size, by increasing the size, it doesn't actually increase the size of the cubes themselves. It increases the size of the distance between the actual cubes. So that's X, then that's the Y, and that's the Z, so creates a grid array. <laughs> that's what it's called. It looks kind of like a Rubik's Cube, so it's a pretty quick way to model the Rubik's Cube, and obviously you can place place um, different materials on different cubes to get the coloring of the actual Rubik's Cube. So, yeah. And obviously, when you go back to the cube object, since this isn't a polygon anymore as you haven't made an edit well not anymore but since as if you can remember in our, my first few tutorials we did it on polygon modeling and that included when you make it editable by hitting C you wouldn't actually be able to change any more of the attributes but since this is not polygon modeling this is just this is just you know 3d modeling uh, with this with a normal object uh, you can actually go back, even though you've made it a child of something, you can actually go back, change something, and it will actually have an immediate effect on the 
on whatever you, whatever you ha you've placed it under. So that's a ver that's really useful. I always I always hate it when because I always hate it when you have to go back. And if you use it with do this kind of stuff with spline, well, uh, polygon modeling, you have then you make a mistake, you have to go all the way back and do it again. And sometimes that can be a real pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the benefit of 3D modeling with uh, actual objects. You can actually change stuff straight away. Um, and that's the same in the previous tutorials, well, previous two tutorials I've uploaded, if this is done in the correct order. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe here, subscribe to my tech channel, um, like, comment, uh, yeah. But most importantly, follow me on Twitter. Well, not most importantly, but make sure you follow me on Twitter because that's where I keep updated, well, keep you guys updated. Um, and I do a lot of personal projects and I don't actually show them to you guys on YouTube because it's just kind of a hassle and I um, upload them to Behance so if you haven't followed me on Behance do that as well now it's in the description uh, but yeah make sure you check out my tech channel as well uh, I post a lot of good quality stuff up there I'm sure some of you guys will like it um, so yeah thanks for watching and goodbye